Hi, everyone, and welcome to How to Connect with Colleges. My name is Shaler. I'm a Regional Senior Coordinator with the University of Nevada, Reno. We'll be talking about how to connect with folks on campus, maybe how to connect with folks that live nearby you, and exactly what that college process looks like. First and foremost, I want to make sure I recognize the organization that a lot of folks who are here tonight, who they're a part of, and it's part of a regional group called Arrow. It's a, a bunch of folks who represent universities uh, where they work for them, but they don't live in the city where that institution resides. So for example, I work for the University of Nevada, Reno. However, I live in the state of California outside of Reno, Nevada. So it's really an opportunity for regional folks to live in the city where they are working with the students they represent. This is an overview of the topics we will be covering tonight. Really, generally, a lot of different avenues and ways to use universities as resources as you navigate the college admissions process. First is visiting the college website. While I think some of these in your head may initially feel like an obvious choice, I think it's still good to remind ourselves that sometimes those obvious choices are really the best route and the best way to begin your college search and college understanding knowledge process. The college website houses a lot of information generally about majors and programs you may be looking for. You can take a look at what type of faculty are on campus, as in what type of research are certain professors doing, maybe in your areas. If research is really interesting and really important to you when you're looking at universities. A website is a good way to, again, understand who is conducting the research that best serves your needs and wants in the certain programs you are looking to study. It's also a great way to get a foundational understanding of when is the application open? Are there deadlines I should be taking into account? And then finally, if you're not on a mailing list for a certain institution, you can fill out their inquiry form on their website. A lot of the times this is found generally on their admissions portion of the website, or it might be on the homepage. It's a good way once, whether this happens before or after you've taken a look at the website, you can say, hey, I want to get onto their mailing list. I'm going to fill out this form and then you'll be able to get all of our communications. And it's also really nice because you're welcome to opt out at any point throughout the process, but it's a great way to, again, if you like it, get some more information moving forward. Another fantastic route and avenues to reach out to universities is through social media. I would argue probably the majority of institutions now have some combination of Instagram. A lot of schools are doing TikTok nowadays. Facebook might be for parents. Twitter may not be as relevant, but it all really depends. It just depends on what platforms are working the best for that institution and also what platforms you use. So that's really important for us as admissions reps and our admissions offices. We want to make sure we reach students where they're at. So that's why we have really been expanding our reach and the opportunities for students to engage in social media. In some instances, there may be social media that is student-led. That's also pretty awesome if you want to get a true student-led experience. And then, for example, at the University of Nevada, we do have a Nevada admissions TikTok account, which my colleague Julio does run, and he works with current students to create that content. And so it's nice because it's driven by a professional in the admission sphere, but it also has some insight from current students. So you feel like you're actually getting relevant content to something that you might be watching as a student. So do keep that in mind. If you're on any of these platforms, take a look for if the institution of your interest has some sort of account, some sort of handle. It might just be called their admissions page. Maybe look up generally the university to see if you can find them and then really go from there. It could give you a good snapshot of campus culture before you even visit. If you truly have no idea where to begin and you want to get an idea of what schools you should be looking at, which school websites you should be taking a look at, which Instagram, TikTok accounts you should be following, start with your high school counselor. They have a wealth of knowledge as far as they have a great understanding of who their students are applying to. If there is a certain school you're looking for that has a certain program, they tend to have a nice good long list. So myself as an admissions counselor work really closely with high school counselors and I help spread the good word about the University of Nevada, same as other folks in 
Aero, or just generally across the country who work for various institutions. Your high school counselor is also a phenomenal resource to start the application process, help navigate that application process, and then admissions counselors are more or less a way to ask those very specific questions. So if you want to take uh, the time to sit down with your high school counselor, talk about, you know what, I'm looking for a school that's really far away. Maybe you're looking for a school that's really close, or you want to have a school that has a meteorology degree, things that might be hard to narrow down, you don't know where to begin. Your counselor can definitely help you with that and help navigate that process. And then as that first bullet point notes, a lot of times folks know if there's a college for happening, if there's a rep visit. So tonight you're here to get a better understanding of colleges in a college fair setting. And that's thanks to your high school counselor putting that on and also working with Aero organization at the same time. Another great way, and again, I think a lot of you know this now because you're here engaging with admissions reps, attend some sort of college fair, some type of college event where you can interact with admissions reps, ask some questions, or just generally take in and soak in a lot of information. I know that, for example, events like tonight, you have a lot of different info that's getting thrown at you. Um, and then after the event, you might not be able to take it all in. But the great thing is that you took the time to do it. You definitely pulled some knowledge out of this evening, and then you're able to apply it moving forward in your application process. And some really common organizations that do fairs are going to be NACAC, and that's really a national organization that hosts a lot of different student-led events. There's also more regionally based organizations such as PANACAC, the Pacific Northwest version of the national organization. They do a lot of really phenomenal fairs as well. StriveScan partners with certain organizations and that's where you have the barcode, you put your information in your phone and then admissions reps can scan that to collect your information. So different organizations are really all about ensuring students have access, they're able to reach out to admissions counselors, and the process can be pretty seamless. So definitely keep an eye out for that. And then again, as mentioned before, your high school counselor should know of nearby super local events as well. If they're hosting a college fair, maybe your school district is doing something, they can definitely help understand where to start looking for those. I'm going to be pretty biased about this point because as an admissions counselor, I am here to answer your questions. And as an admissions counselor, we want you to reach out and ask your questions. We are here to be available for you. That truly is what our job is all about. Whether you're reaching out via email, whether you're calling us, in many instances, a lot of institutions offer text opportunities. Again, going back to that social media bit, maybe you're able to send a DM through that account and then reach out to whomever is organizing that account. There are a lot of instances, especially for regional folks, uh, we might do a coffee meetup, a little bit more of a form formal and informal opportunity to sit down, chat with someone, go specifically over your student account, but also um, a great way to be like, oh, hey, you know, our admissions rep, their person, uh, they like this coffee shop that I've been going to because they live in the area, certain things like that. That's Again, a little bit biased here. That's why I love being a regional rep because I can do things like that. In some instances, reaching out to your rep might be a great way to demonstrate your interest in that institution. If that is a portion of the application process that matters, that's not always the case for every school. And then if you're not able to do any of these things in person, say you're not able to go to the college visit when your rep is on your high school campus, you're not able to do a coffee meetup because you're busy. And I recognize that a lot of students are engaged in a lot of outside curriculars, such as sports, work, family obligations, and a ton of other things. Virtual appointments or virtual office hours are a great way to meet with your specific rep or with an admissions office of a college of your choice and get those questions answered. And really one of the holy grails of interacting with folks on campus is going to be visiting those campuses. Truthfully, I think this is what every sh student should be doing once you know where you want to apply or maybe even before you apply. It's one of the true ways to find out if you can picture yourself on that campus. I definitely know when I was a student applying, I visited a few colleges and as soon as I stepped foot and walked around, I knew that I didn't want to apply there anymore. 
So I actually really encourage students to potentially consider doing college visits this summer before their junior year to help narrow down your college list before you actually spend that money on application fees. However, I do recognize that visiting campuses, especially if they're far away, does cost a lot of money. So if you're not able to do so, virtual tours are a really phenomenal way to get a snapshot of campus as well. In total, if you're not able to maybe tour before you're applying, definitely try to tour some campuses or do some virtual opportunities after you get your decisions, after you get some acceptances and you're trying to narrow it down from there. That's a great way, again, to help figure out if you can picture yourself on that campus, if that campus fits all of your needs and any other things that are super important to you as you're navigating the college process. I always ask students, what are you looking for in a college? What are some top two important factors you need your college to offer you? Those are great questions to consider at any point in the college process. And for some colleges, especially if they're a little bit further away, there may be fly-in opportunities that can help subsidize the cost of attending a really a formal college visit. So consider that as well. Think about these opportunities and talk to your high school counselor or even and or your admissions rep to figure out what is going to work best for you. If you're able to come to campus, take that tour, learn more information about it physically there, definitely consider reaching out to people outside of the admissions office. There are usually current students who work in tandem with the admissions office, so you definitely should talk to them, get their perspective on being a student, their true authentic experience. You can ask folks when you're walking around, just taking a campus tour, take that opportunity. If you do have a professor who's doing really awesome research and you're thinking, if I could work with them, I'm going to want to be attending here. Reach out to them. See if they're available to chat or generally talk about the opportunities on campus and why they think you should be a student there. It could be an opportunity to meet with academic advisors if that is at all an option. Not always the case before you're a current enrolled student. But in total, there are so many opportunities and ways to reach out to people when you're on campus. So know that that opportunity goes beyond the admissions office, and I highly encourage that you do take advantage of that. Also something to consider, again, I know not everyone may have the time or money to travel to visit all of their colleges of interest. There might be an alumni group in your area. So for example, at the University of Nevada, Reno, we have a Bay Area or Northern California alumni group. And those are folks who have attended the University of Nevada. Ideally, they've had jobs or they're in a current job and they network with other recent graduates to really cultivate the Wolfpack love, but also cultivate the understanding of we're here together, we're navigating this process of finding a job after college. So there might be one in the city where you live, whether you're in Seattle or somewhere else in the state of Washington, consider thinking about if I'm attending or applying to this institution, is there a nearby alumni group that I can connect without even having to travel to that campus to visit them? And as we are wrapping up this presentation, I will definitely encourage all the juniors here in the room to apply early. A great reason to apply early is, of course, to get your admissions decision earlier. If that works out, you'll have access to greater social media pages, but you also will have plenty of time to apply for any scholarships for said institution. In many instances, there may be a separate application for scholarships outside of admissions for a school. So if you want to make sure you're being evaluated for everything, it's good to double check. Again, that is not always the case. And you'll find that that is a big caveat for the admissions process. What happens at one school may not be done at another school. So that's why, again, admissions reps, your high school counselor, we're here to help you navigate that process and make sure you have all the information you need to move forward. And then, of course, in my opinion, applying early truly allows you to enjoy that last semester of senior year. All you're doing is waiting for admissions decisions, and senioritis does hit and kick in really quickly. So we want to make sure that you don't have any to-do list items in order to be admitted while you're enjoying that last year of high school. As you think about the next steps that are really important as you are going into your senior year, Think about, again, meeting with that high school counselor, 
start to narrow down those list of schools that you're interested in so that way you're not applying to too many. Again, application fees tend not to be free, so you want to make sure that you're not spending too much on that. And ultimately, you're only going to attend one school, so that's also why applying to 20 is going to be pretty much the same thing as applying to 5 or 10. If you are applying to a school that requires letters of recommendation, start thinking about who are going to be writing those right now. That could be someone who is your teacher. That could be your boss or manager at a place of work or a volunteer a lo location or organization. So think about that. If you do anything outside of school, such as sports, clubs, jobs, volunteering, if you have any family obligations, think about how you're going to craft and create your resume list. Essays will definitely start coming up, but ultimately a lot of times essay content is ask a little bit more about yourself, what you're going to be contributing to the university. So think about things that are important to you and topics that are going to be of interest for you to write about. So something that you're really passionate about and then submitting your application. I hope that this helped navigate the process and that maybe you feel a lot better about reaching out to a admissions counselor. Again, noting that we are here to help. We do wanna make sure that is an easy process for you. And uh, if you do have any questions about the University of Nevada, Reno specifically, I am happy to help. And if you wanna fill out any feedback forms about this college fair, you're welcome to do that as well. And otherwise, have a great rest of your evening.